Now, let's say you actually want to travel and you don't want to spend a lot of money. You don't want to go into debt and you don't want to use it, for example, with a credit card where you come back and you're broker than ever. And by the way, this video is not about, for example, I'm going to use my credit card. I'm going to spend money and then I'm going to get points. Or I'm going to sign up for new credit cards and get sign up bonuses. I usually see people and on average, they basically overspend a bunch of money on credit cards. And when they sign up for these credit cards and have to spend to actually get the bonus, sometimes, guess what? The balance actually stays and they're stuck basically paying for these things. Now, I'm not a big fan of credit cards. I don't own a single one of them. And the whole goal for this video is to show you less expensive ways to pay for your vacations. Now, honestly, if you're picturing a vacation like you see on the internet, or for example, on those advertisements where you're on a beach, you're not doing anything, and you're just doing whatever you want, and you're just basically doing full leisure, this video is probably not for you. This is going to be, for example, crazy, but interesting ways to actually go ahead and travel around the world and not spend that much money on the two main expenses, which are usually going to be where are you going to stay and what are you going to eat, okay? If you can solve those two expenses, usually you can find a way to save up money for your ticket and to actually get there, okay? By the way, this video is pretty interesting and I hope you actually enjoy it. And do me a favor and smash the like button. Now, the very first idea, guys, is going to be woof. And no, I'm not talking about a dog, all right? But it's W-W-O-O-F. And it stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. And you're probably wondering, Tommy, what does a farm have to do with me traveling and spending less money? Well, the idea is organic farms, they need hands, okay? Hands to actually work the land and everything else. So if you offer to work at one of these organic farms, they will actually be able to provide for you somewhere to sleep and on top of that, stuff to eat, okay? That is the idea. So you actually just get there and all you have to do is work. And now how much do you work? Well, the answer is usually it's going to be from Monday to Friday. You have the weekends off and the amount of time you have to work is going to be usually about five to six hours. But it depends on location and it depends by farm also. I've seen good experiences. You basically learn a lot and they're able to travel around while they're also working. And I've learned about people that basically it was a lot harder, all right? So you have to basically compare and contrast and see exactly which one works best for you. Now, if you're interested, here is the website right here. It's called, again, Woof, and that's the organization. And they have, guess what? A lot of locations. Again, it looks pretty fancy, but they're basically everywhere. They're in Spain, they're in Brazil, they're in, I don't even know how to pronounce that, Kokali. Um, they're basically everywhere in Africa, America, Asia, and Pacific. Okay, so if I wanna to go to Europe, for example, here's Albania. If I wanna to go to Albania, here it is. There are farms in Albania that are actually willing to provide for me housing and everything else. And here it is, family home and garden, rural organism, destination, eco, I, don't, I can't read all that stuff, okay? But this is the farm, all right? And it already has like three reviews and you're actually able to go there and work there and boom. Here is all the information you actually need, all right? So check this out, okay? Um, children accepted, bedroom, pets accepted, campsites, um, vegetarian, omnivores, all the information here, and here are some basically like um, reviews. Good morning, your project was interesting to us. We were scouts and nature does not scare us. Okay, so this sounds like people that are actually just interested in visiting. This is basically from 2024, 2020. So yes, you're able to go there for like two weeks, one week, a month, extended, however you actually want to do it. And that's the cool part about it, okay? You're actually not limited to just staying somewhere for like a week or two weeks, okay? It's pretty interesting. I would actually consider this not for the sense of just saving money, but because I'm also interested in learning more about agriculture and farming and everything else. And it's a great way to actually learn while being somewhere else. Pretty cool stuff. Now, number two, guys, is going to be home exchange sites. It's exactly what it sounds like. Now, before you say, Tommy, I live in the city, you know, or I live in a nice house in a rural area. 
but it's not that nice. It's not that elegant. There's nothing around my neighborhood, okay? No one's gonna, tr gonna want to exchange houses with me. The answer is, that's not true. A lot of people from big cities around the world, they're basically just interested in getting away for a while. Now you might think, for example, Tommy, what if I have a stranger come into my house and basically trash the place? The answer is, you're most likely going to be hooking up or meeting up with people that are basically like-minded, which have those same concerns as you. And there are, for example, checks and so on. So the answer is that probably is not going to be like a big issue, but I also wouldn't leave massive things of value around my home with a stranger I don't know. But as far as like the cleaning stuff, I, I really wouldn't worry that much about it. But yeah, if I wanted to, I could exchange, for example, where I live here in Dominican Republic, and maybe exchange it with somebody, for example, in New York or someone in California that just wants to get away for like a month or like two weeks or a week or whatever it is. We exchange properties. Now, guess what? I don't have to cover hotels or Airbnbs because, hey, we just exchange houses. Now, by the way, the only way I would consider doing something like this would be with a buddy system. I would not do this alone. I've seen way too many crazy movies and TV shows, so I'm not interested in doing it that way. So yeah, if I'm, for example, with my wife, when, if I get married, God willing, or if I'm with like some friends and I actually want to go there, great stuff. But me by myself in a stranger's house that I've never been before, in a place, no, I'm not doing that, okay? Now, number three is going to be going to a hostel instead of, for example, an Airbnb or a hotel. Now, I was looking into a trip, potentially, to Cancun, that's in Mexico, okay? And hotels are super expensive. They can be anywhere from $80 to $130 if you're trying to go, for example, to an all-inclusive resort or any of that stuff. It's very expensive, okay? However, though, however, what if you actually go to an Airbnb? Obviously, it's going to be less expensive, but it might still be expensive. So, what if you actually go to a hostel? A hostel is a place where you're actually able to stay with multiple people and share a room together. And sometimes you're actually able to get like a private room for yourself, but the prices are much more different. I'm talking about instead of paying $100 with a hotel or 40 or 50 with, a, with an Airbnb, you could be paying, for example, $12 or $13 or $15 per night um, just by doing a hostel. Now, I want you guys to actually see what this actually looks like because guess what? It's not going to be like, you know, pretty per se, but it's not that bad either. So here's like a hostel website. I, I, I think I'm saying it's supposed to be host, hostel. Um, basically, it sounds like I'm saying like, like something dangerous, okay? But let's say I wanna go to Cancun, right? So I'm going to Cancun um, next week or whatever, it doesn't matter. Now, here it is. Everything is gonna pop up here. Now, by the way, this is hostel world. Now, here it is, $13, $11, $30, you know, $15. So let's say I actually want to go here. And by the way, a lot of people, a lot of people go to these places. Nomad Hotel, boom. Now here's what it looks like. Here are some of the room and examples, okay? Obviously, it's like the cool stuff, but show me the rooms. I want to I want to show you guys the rooms per se. Now here, see, you have like a private room if you want to pay more money. But you have, for example, you see he's smiling, she's smiling, but these are bunk beds. Okay, I don't want you guys to be fooled. These are bunk beds where they actually stay here. See, there's a bunk bed here, bunk bed here, bunk bed here, bunk bed here. And these people basically stay like that. Now, who exactly is this for? It's for someone that wants to go to a foreign place to experience the culture and not really be in a hotel or anything like that, okay? It's for someone that might be wanting to travel alone potentially and wants to meet new people and so on. Again, even this, I would do it with a buddy system. I, I'm, I just have a lot of trust issues, you know? That's, that's just my thing. But yeah, that's the idea. You're able to do this. Now tell me, what about the kitchen and the bathroom? Well, obviously, these are things you share with strangers, all right? So that is the idea, and you should know about that, and that's why it's so cheap. But would I consider doing this? The answer is yeah, I would. But again, with a buddy system in a place where I'm basically just going to be outside almost every single day and not be worried about home. And also, this is a nice place because they also have spaces like a pool, like a little restaurant I think they have, and then so on, maybe like a work area. So there are spaces you can actually do other stuff and work, you know. But yeah, keep that in mind. Hostels are a great way to save a lot of money when you're actually going to be wanting to travel. Now, number four 
is going to be house sitting. Now, house sitting basically involves exactly what it sounds like. Again, let's say I don't want to exchange my house with a stranger. I'd rather a stranger come here and just house sit my house, okay? That's the idea. Now, I'm guessing this could be done for free, you know? But I'm also guessing this could be done for, for money, right? That That's the idea. So you're actually able to find these websites online for house sitting. And I saw one where a couple can come to your house and they stay here and they can stay here like a week or two weeks. And I, I heard about stories of people that actually do this and they don't pay any rent. But that's the idea, okay? But if you want to do that, it's a great way to potentially do it. Now, let's say, for example, I want to house it. I want to go to, I want to go to Europe, right? And there's someone out there with a house and they want me to house it. So I would go there, I would house at their house um, during the time I have to, and then I would go out and do whatever I wanna do and so on. That is the idea. Now, number five is going to be join a research group or a volunteer service or even a missions group, okay? Now missions as far as, for example, church and spreading the gospel, you could go, for example, to different parts of the world to actually do this with other people. and. You could actually do this to experience the world, but mostly to spread the gospel. To spread the gospel is the overall goal. But you could also do a volunteer service where you actually just go and you try to volunteer with other strangers to provide services. Now, what I've noticed is that this is almost like a business in a way because you have to pay money to actually volunteer. Kind of sounds weird, right? So you might pay, for example, $300 a, a week or $200 a week, and you're able to basically do things for people, okay? Whether it's provide dentist work if you're a dentist, whether it's teaching them English if you speak English and you have the proficiency in teaching, um, you're able to do a lot of things or just, for example, taking care of children and, and so on. You're able to go all, or taking care of animals because people actually like that type of stuff, okay? But you could be paying a lot of money to volunteer which to me kind of sounds a little weird, okay? So let's look at this one right here, right? So this is a volunteer in uh, in Namibia, in Namibia, I think it's Namibia, and the program fees are $1,196. So here it is, okay? Program fees from $1,200, let's call it what it is, for two weeks. It's, it's a lot of money. So two weeks you spend here, you're able to be with animals and so on, but guess what? You are paying some money, right? That that That's the whole thing. So. It's, it, it kind of sounds weird because it's like you're volunteering, but are you are you really volunteering? Because you're spending a bunch of money to actually do it, okay? But there are several different other type of things you could actually do with this whole idea. You could join research projects that are across the seas and so on. So just finding different ways to go overseas, not just for leisure, but to actually be productive and be a part of something could save you a lot of money. By the way, this website is called International Volunteer HQ. I just found that first one on Google. You could probably find more. I would use Reddit as a source and just orientate yourself as much as possible when it comes to this subject. But yeah, it's a cool way to do all this stuff without getting into debt, having to worry about credit card points and the rest. Thanks for watching guys. As always, like and subscribe. Peace.